Hi everyone. I don't know why I always want to wave when I when I say that. Hi everyone. I'm such a dork. Um anyway, Sunshine Christina, aka the dork here. I am working on a whole bunch of stuff. What's new, right? Um one of the main things that I'm folk well actually Let's see, if I was going to categorize or, see, I can't even do that. Um, four things that I'm working on, five things. Five things that I'm working on right now are um, Melissa Lucio, and I say her first because her life ends on April 27th. And I'm glad that the Innocence Project has stepped in. I'm very, very thankful um, for that, for her, for her chances. Um, but this is a case that for 13 years, no one except for Margaret Schmucker cared about, right? And then the documentarian that made the state of Texas versus Melissa um, came around, I think in 2019 the, or 2017, maybe the documentary was released, um, I believe in 2020. Um, and now that Sainz, um, the DA, it's spelled S-A-E-N-Z, has signed her or has filed for her death warrant and Cameron County Judge Gabriela Garcia um, signed it um, and she has a death date of April 27, 2022. Um, people are finally starting to pay attention and um, I'm going to be honest here. I am angry with myself that I didn't know about this case. I'm absolutely furious that this woman and her family have been dealt this incredibly awful hand and and for so long she no one cared enough to listen right um so like i said the innocence project sorry i was eating candy um the Innocence Project has got this case, so that's great. Um, this case is awful. It has everything. Wrongful convictions always have the same thing, though. They have asshole DAs who do not care about justice and the truth. They care about winning and re-election, right? Um, public defenders that are just a joke and are the reason why public defenders are called public pretenders. Um, a um, tunnel vision, false confession, junk science, uh, and this one, testimony that was ignored, um, no physical evidence, sounds like Brendan's case, right? There's no physical evidence in this case, um, and tomorrow on the Crime Theory Exchange, um, we're going to talk about Highland Community College, which I've, is a very important issue as well. But we're also going to talk about an article um, written about Melissa's case in this psychology today. And um, I think that it's going to help explain a lot of the mindset. Um, I haven't finished the whole article yet, and I'm going to be interested in seeing how they, they try and sell this. Because basically, in a nutshell, this is what happened. Melissa Lucio was considered nothing in society, right? She was, she was the epitome of a, a shitty mom. She had a bunch of kids. She couldn't take care of them. Um, DCF in and out of her life. Um, her kid dies. And the cops get tunnel vision. And they say that she didn't die accidentally. Now, the DA on this case was an asshole. And he was, he's in prison. Remember that now. 
Armando Villalobos is in prison. And he was taking money to look the other way on cases. And he had on February, I believe 7th, February 7th of 2007. So 10 days before Mariah's death, Armando Villalobos had allowed a man, Amit Livingston, who had just been sentenced to 23 years in prison for killing his girlfriend with two shots to the back of her head. He had just got sentenced to 23 years in prison. And uh, Villalobos and the judge allowed Livingston to have a few days, 60 days actually, to get his affairs in order before he turned himself in to do his 23 years. Are you kidding me? And of course, the dude ran. So he was on the run for like eight years, 10 years. And he finally got, um, he finally got caught in India, um, I think in 2013, um, which is around the same time that Villa Lobos got arrested or actually got sentenced for the scams he was running in the DA's office. So, so Villa Lobos is up for re-election. He had just let this guy go and he needed to look like he was tough on crime. And Melissa's case was perfect. A woman beats her child to death. Uh, it's just awful. I have no mercy for her. He had her charged with capital murder, and he sought the ultimate punishment in Texas, which is the death penalty. And this is a woman who had a, I think, a misdemeanor conviction, or maybe a couple of them. No felonies on her record, and in thousands of pages of documents, not one allegation of abuse, that of physical abuse. Neglect, yes. You know, definitely neglect. And then what's also interesting is he sought the capital murder charge against her, but he let her husband or boyfriend take a four-year plea deal, and he's out of prison. So she was, you know, and then her public defender, um, a guy named Pete Gilman, is a piece of crap. He, not only did he have multiple pieces of evidence, that not only was Melissa not responsible for what happened to Mariah, that one of the children may have pushed Mariah down the stairs, but he never presented that to court. He didn't get an expert to refute the medical examiner who is saying that this was the worst case of child abuse she had ever seen. And he had no one talk about the fact that when the body has a traumatic brain injury and it, it's go, it goes untreated, the body slowly starts to die. So everything fails, right? Your blood doesn't clot properly. You can tap. I mean, you can literally lay against something and get a bruise. Now, I know this for a fact because I had a traumatic brain injury. I had brain surgery, which is the only reason I'm alive. I didn't have my brain surgery. My injury was on December 22nd, 2015. And I didn't have my brain surgery until January, I think 7th or 8th of 2016. I walked around for days because the hospital that um, the two hospitals that I had went to first didn't think there was anything wrong with me, but I had, I don't know, I don't know why or how that even happened, but thankfully I um, had, I got to another hospital um, away from here. They did a, um, an emergency um, I forgot the name of it, I think an MRI, and they found multiple sheared blood vessels. Um, I had them in the parietal lobe and the right frontal lobe, and they went in and they did brain surgery and fixed it, or else I wouldn't be here. So I had bruises. The point of that, the whole, uh, the only reason I'm telling you that is because um, I was 
if you if that my face at that time I had bruises everywhere and I was really like out of it but I wasn't really like I didn't really look like I was dying I mean literally I the, the hospital let me go so I can understand why with all that was going on Melissa didn't recognize that her daughter was severely injured you know and so it's definitely not a first degree murder case by any means and it's definitely not a death penalty case no matter what happened it was an accident there's no history of physical abuse um and she needs to not be on death row and she definitely doesn't need to die on april 27th so i'm working on that now i'm also working on the highland community college in kansas case um and let's do a little bit of looking on that let me see what screen's on okay perfect um because i don't really know a lot about this besides what ripper and jack and i have talked about right just a little bit i know that there are some very racist and just just evil individuals in educ and you know at, at a federal college funded institution and they gotta go that's what i know so it looks like highland community college was the very first college in kansas and let's see institutional let's go to institutional overview about hcc okay so highland provides lifelong learning opportunities and contributes to economic development to enhance the quality of life in the communities we serve Highland Community College began as Highland University in 1858, making it the first college in Kansas. After eight name changes, the college has now provided higher education opp opportunities to the people of Northeast Kansas for more than 160 years. So it's a very old institution. And that sh you should have pride in, in your community over your college, right? And you should want it staffed with people who represent you in a positive light. And staffing it with people like Deb Fox, the Dean of Students, who thinks in any way that it is appropriate to reference Hitler when speaking to a student or parents and, and try to say that Hitler was a good leader. There's no positive spin on that. You can't make that okay. You just can't. And then you add in the fact that you are trying to diminish the talent and the potential of a student, an athlete who is a person of color, and you are speaking, if I'm correct, to a set of parents whose child goes to that school and the parents are also people of color referencing Hitler in that conversation in a conversation like that was an intentional act to minimize them and make herself feel more powerful and people like that should not in any way have interaction with our young society members because they are our future and what hitler did 
There's nothing good about it. Ever. Nothing. He, he murdered, he is responsible for the murder of millions of innocent people. He ruined a country's economy. He ruined a country's history. He ruined societies. He, he damaged society in such a way that we still feel the effects from it, right? Because we still have people like Deb Fox thinking that what he did can be spun in a positive light. So, yeah, that's a problem. Um, not feeling bad at all. So, it looks like there are... So it's okay. So this it's set up like our like the community college in my area. Most students start at the local community college here, finish their two year degree and then transfer to the university to get their bachelor's. Right. And that's how now there are multiple two year programs like an RN program. Um, you know, sur surgical tech, x-ray tech, uh, respiratory tech, and then they're also like vocations. And you, can, and you can get like AAs, like a teaching degree, um, all kinds of stuff. But the focus is to continue the education beyond Saint, it's beyond the community college level. Um, and, and the purpose for that is the more education you have, the better potential you have at earning more revenue, right? And, you know, and bettering yourself and bettering your family and, and et cetera. Common sense stuff. So studies conducted at the Regent Universities in Kansas show that students who begin their college careers at HCC and then transfer do as well or better academically as all other students who transfer to those university and those who start there. I would be interested to see if this is an accurate statistic. From studying the state of Wisconsin's bullshit, I have learned that people will skew data to make it say what they want it to say, but in reality, it says something markedly different, right? So, there's 4,000 students, and I'm pretty sure 1699 is full-time. And that's at the main campus in Highland. And then there are regional centers in Atchison, Baileyville, Perry, and Wamega. And then they have the online options for classes. And then they also have like dual enrollment throughout 31 high schools. That's awesome. See, they have to get this out of there and get some some good people in place to help continue this at this process. We don't want these children, our young adults, to to suffer because of mistakes and evil acts done by adults, right? We don't want the kids that it's not the students' fault at all. And it's not the townspeople's fault, uh, you know. I think um, Ripper has said repeatedly that many in the town have issue with everything that's going on here. They think that what's going on is blatantly wrong as well. The main campus is located in a small rural northeast Kansas community surrounded by agricultural land. The main campus has 22 apartment style residence halls thriving athletic programs and active student life. Across all of its locations, HCC offers 14 different associate degrees and 16 technical certificates. The history and mission of the college can best be described as providing opportunities for higher education that citizens in the region would not have had otherwise. Whether as a conduit to a four degree for professional enhancement or personal development, the college has provided affordable access to higher education in Northeast Kansas. It is governed by a six member board of trustees, that's interesting, elected from Donovan County and is coordinated by the Kansas Board of Regents. Now, I have a couple of different things about this. So, 
their purpose, they say it right here on their front web page, front on the front page of the website. The, the their purpose is to provide opportunities for higher educations that citizens in the region would not have had otherwise. That's their whole, that's their main, that is, what's it called? That's their end game. Their end game is to better citizens of Northeast Kansas. <clears throat> so that's messed up. So what, that's the wrong attitude to take. You want to better the students and you want to provide them an academic experience and a living experience that is such that they would entertain staying there, which that will better the economy and better the, the local growth, right? Because population growth means revenue growth, which means, you know, society growth. And the the better the ethnic, the larger the ethnic diversity, the better the place to live, because you're exposed to so much more <clears throat> in culture. I loved living in Houston. I loved living in Baltimore, and I loved living in South Florida, because. I could go to the Asian market. I could go, you know, to the Spanish side of town. I could get authentic stuff. I loved, I love that because when you um, surround yourself with friends and people who are ethnically diverse, you expand your mind, you expand your knowledge, you expand. The first thing I think of is food because I'm a foodie. If anyone's ever seen me on TikTok, you can tell by my body that I love food. Um, and, you know, and what a that's like the best way to get to know someone is to cook them a meal or have them cook you a meal and sit down and just have a conversation. Right. And um, and they, you know, they're just they they're they're not seeing the opportunity for progress and they are only focusing on the you know it's it's just it's bad it's completely bad all right so let's see what we have oh i like the sign of this strategic plan what is your strategic plan so the thing is, is we have to keep talking about this. We have to talk about Melissa Lucio and the fact that she is innocent. The state of Texas wants to execute her. Um, and she never should have been convicted in the first place. We, sh we have to talk about the fact that EDPA hamstringed the judges in the Court of Appeals from granting her relief. We have to talk about Highland Community College and the fact that people of color who go to school there are being discriminated against and teachers and coaches who try to do what any rational, normal human being would do and stick up for these students and when they are being discriminated against are also being discriminated against. They're being lied about. They're being fired. They're having their reputations ruined. They're financially being left, you know, in shambles. All because they don't want to conform to a Hitler-esque type of thinking. And that's fucked up. Um, we have to talk about Nicole Bacchus and what was done to her. She was used by... Um, a DA and a couple of, of so-called newspaper reporters and a dirty cop to better their careers and their financial bottom line. But she's innocent. If you have to frame someone to make them look guilty of a crime, they're not guilty. It's that simple. We have to keep talking about Stephen and Brendan because the state of Wisconsin is disgusting. 
Um, and here's a sad statistic for you. I found an article the other day. In 2013, the state of Wisconsin was locking up one... I'm going to get it twisted. No, okay. One out of eight black men had been to jail or prison in the state of Wisconsin. All right. Now, it's one out of 36 black people, male and female, have been imprisoned in the state of Wisconsin. The state of Wisconsin locks up more people of color than any other state in the United States, yet they have like only 6% of their population are people of color. When you are, when, so they have, so if you have a hundred people in a room, I think it's six people, six people will be people of color in Wisconsin. If you have a hundred prisoners in a room, 46 of them will be persons of color. And what's even more interesting about that is that they didn't separate. They separated white, black, and Latino. They didn't separate American Indian. Okay. Now, they also have many Indian reservations in Wisconsin. And they also discriminate against the American Indian person of color, right? You know, if you can... What I've learned about the state of Wisconsin is if you can take advantage of them, they will. And... People have been taking advantage of American Indians since forever, right? So, um, I would be curious to see out of those 54 white people in the 100 prisoners, how many of those 54 are Indian? Um, because I have a feeling it's probably going to be another 10 or 15. And the statistic is actually going to be something closer to... If you have a hundred prisoners in a room, 46 will be black, probably eight will be Spain, Latino, okay? And then 15 will be American Indian, and then about 30 of them will be Caucasian. And that is all you need to know to know that a criminal justice system is corrupt. Because the thing of it is, is if you have three people who have never committed, four people who have never committed a crime, who commit the same crime, all four should get the same sentence, plain and simple. If it's the same crime, they should do the same time. But that's not happening. If you're white, you get probation. If you're a person of color, minority, or I'm sorry, if you're white and wealthy, you get probation, if you get charged at all. If you are disabled, low income, or a person of color, you're, you're getting charged, convicted, and likely sentenced to prison so they can continue making money off you. Because when you go to prison, you belong to the state. So you work in the state profits. You get, the state also gets federal benefits to, to house you. you. It's, 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 it's disgusting. disgusting. It, it really is. is. So, so we, we have, have to keep, keep talking about Stephen and Brendan. Brendan. We, we have, have to keep, keep talking about Nicole Bacchus. We have to keep talking about Melissa Lucio. We have to keep talking about Highland Community College. Because the same thinking is what's causing all of these issues. It's the same mentality. It's classifying people by who you categorize them as. Instead of saying, this is a human being, these are their rights. That's, that's not how it works for people who take advantage of others. And it's sad, but that's what's going on. So a strategic plan master document. Let me get off my soapbox and let's read about this. All right. So this is their mission goals. Transform online platforms. Continuous quality improvement in all campus communication to include regular meetings among divisions, written communications, employee forums. Commitment to the public good. Now look, they got their wine. <laughs> It's, it's just, just such, such a joke. joke. 
Um, it's such a joke. Because it says it right there in the beginning that they're only focused on the local Northeastern citizens. They should be focused on the students. This, focusing on the students, producing well-educated students with a, with a desire to service the community, not service the community, that's the wrong word, to better the community, community outreach, um, socialize in the community, um, integrate the college kids into the community through church, through other activities. But see, when you're not, when you're up to no good, you don't want anybody around, right? So they can't very well have the college kids come hang out at the town hall or do a, for instance, a basketball game between, um, like, the local police department and fire department and the, the athletic kids because you've been arresting them illegally and fleecing money from them. So, of course, if you're scared to play them in a basketball game because you know damn good and well they're going to try and elbow you in the eye, and they have much more talent than you do, so not only are they going to leave you bruised and battered, they're also going to make you look dumb because they're going to run the score up on you. That's what I would do. If it was me, and you were humiliating me in, in public, and then tried to uh, make it all look chee-chee-hee-hee by having a... Uh, having a, a, a charity basketball game fundraiser or charity football game fundraiser, I would make you eat the dirt off the bottom of my shoe. I would. I just want to check Nicole's case. And, yeah, I'm going to write an article for her tomorrow. There's nothing new. I'm going to get one out there. I think there needs... Yeah, see, that's 2013. So I'm writing an article on Nicole's case tomorrow. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to write one on Highland tonight and get it posted to the Reddit forum. And then also on Vocal. And then tomorrow I'm going to write one on Nicole. I think I'm doing this in a video, all this, saying all these things, to make myself committed to getting it done. It's, I'm a volunteer, you know. I like everyone else here, this is a hobby, but I take it as seriously as I would take a paying job because these people need someone to champion for them, right? These kids at Highland Community College need to know that not everyone in the world are, you know, are small-minded, racist idiots like what they experienced at Kansas. N Nicole Bacchus and Melissa Lucio need to know that, you know, not everyone in the world thinks that they committed these atrocious crimes that they didn't. Um, Stephen and Brendan in the state of Wisconsin need to know that we will never stop looking for the truth. So I am putting this out into the World Wide Web, just to let you know, that's going to be my plans. Um, I uh, think we have an open mic soon on Foul Play, so I'm going to go. Um, we'll see if my laptop lets me post this, um, and uh, I hope everyone has a great night.